Today, we'll be looking at hot ranges and how they can affect the performance of your cluster. I'll create two tables for this example. The first table, I'll create a primary key using the serial data type. That will create an auto-incrementing integer, which is known for introducing hotspots. And I'll create a second table with UUIDs, which are known for having good distribution among their values. First, I'll create a cluster. This will be a three node cluster. And we'll work with the serial data type first. I'll create a table called purchase, whose ID is serial, and it's the primary key, with an amount. Next, I'll artificially lower the size of the ranges. By default, ranges are 512 megabytes in size, a megabyte being 1024 by 1024 bytes. I'll lower that down to one megabyte, and that will allow us to see how data is distributed across the ranges. I'll insert one million rows into the database. Next, I'll make sure we're using the modern view range configuration, and I'm going to get the ID of the table. This is how CockroachDB will store the ranges in the background. So the table number, as far as CockroachDB is concerned, is 104. So I can get data from there using this query. I'm selecting the range ID, the leaseholder, the start key in the pretty human readable format, and the end key in the same format. So we can see that there's a bunch of data in here. It's all sorted because that's how primary keys work. They ensure order and uniqueness for the table. So in each of these ranges, it has a start and an end key. It has the start, which is the very first value that's in the table, up to, but not including, this ID. And then the next table starts from this ID and carries on. As we inserted a bunch of data all at one time, CockroachDB is now going through a process of rebalancing the data across the nodes. So we can see that the leaseholders per nodes are converging towards an average. And that can be seen with a query to the database. If I ask for the leaseholder and the number of ranges it has from the ranges table, where the table is 104, our table, grouped by the leaseholder ID, we can see the terminal equivalent of what we see in the UI. And they are converging towards an average. So I'll give that a few more minutes to settle in and then we'll run some tests. With those leaseholder counts more or less converged, I'm now going to run a series of tests. One will be a write test. I will write a bunch of data into the table and we can see how nicely the data is distributed amongst the leaseholders. Knowing this is the serial data type, we are going to see some hotspots and I'll explain why. I'll kick off the write test. And with those inserting now, I'm going to come down to average replica queries per node. And in an ideal world, we would see all of these lines going up, indicating that data is being evenly distributed across the cluster. Unfortunately, that's not what we're seeing. We're seeing that node three is doing basically all of the work. Because this is sequential data, all of the new data is being tacked on to the end of the last range, rather than being inserted into different ranges within the cluster. I've stopped that now, and now I'm gonna be doing a series of reads from the table, and we'll see how that affects the database. Ideally, again, we would see an even distribution of reads across the cluster. If we can tap into the CPU of all of the nodes in the cluster, we stand to get better performance from our cluster. What we're seeing here is the original 1 million rows that I inserted are being read from. With the application in read mode, it asks for all of the data in a random order and then simply goes through all of the IDs and reads the values out. So we are seeing reads hitting nodes one and two, but node three is still much more busy than the other nodes because that's where most of the leaseholders for the new data I've written exist. I'll now do the same test again, but with the UUID column. I would expect better distribution of leaseholders in this example. So therefore better read and write throughput. Once again, I'll artificially limit the range size in the table, and I'll insert this time 100,000 rows. I'll wait for those to converge. We can see that this is the node that we're primarily hitting when we're inserting all the data, and the other nodes are catching up, so the leaseholders are being distributed across the cluster. Now that the leaseholders have converged, I'm going to run another write test to show how the inserts are more evenly distributed across the cluster. I would expect to see that now, because we've got a more uniform identifier, CockroachDB is able to insert into random ranges across the cluster, harnessing more of the nodes. Whereas before, with a serial primary key identifier, we were just inserting into the last range, which would have existed on one node. 
we're starting to see an uptick in the replica queries across all nodes, indicating that all nodes are playing a part with this right workload. I'll cancel the right workload and initiate a read workload. Like with the serial ID example, I've selected everything out of the table in a random order and I'm just going through those items and selecting the value out of the table. And what I'd expect to see is all of these lines remain fairly close to one another, showing that data is being served from leaseholders across all of the nodes. We can see that node 2 is slightly less busy than nodes 1 and 3, and that's simply because node 2 has slightly fewer leaseholders on it. Over time, as CockroachDB rebalances the leaseholders, this would eventually settle into an average. I hope that today's demo has shown you how a uniquely distributed index, be it primary key or otherwise, results in a good even distribution of queries across all the nodes in your cluster, and how an incrementing identifier, again primary key or regular index, will negatively impact the performance of your cluster because most of the queries are being handled by one leaseholder at a time. When one range in this example is filled up, a new range will be created that might exist on a new node, it might not but you're only ever getting the benefit of one node at a time.